Hi, welcome back. I'm here for the first time, Bob Venn, and we're just looking at the picture of the urger, uh, the pamphlet that was given out, and I would like to thank Marty Picard for taking my place and becoming me on the tour of the urger, and just as long as you don't try that, Marty, at the bank or anywhere else that I go, you're all right. We thank you very much. Um, uh, Marty's done a lot for Calvin and Hometown Cable. He does some of the village board meetings and does a good job, and we appreciate that very much. Uh, we're just going to close out this whole program. We had a couple of things in mind, and they haven't worked out as of this moment. Number one, we intended to get someone to talk with us. Uh, uh, we were trying to get Larry Paquette. He was not available today. And we have someone else in town who used to work on uh, one of the tugboats, and we were going to talk with him, and that may still be possible, and if it is, it'll follow this segment you're going to watch right now, and if it's not there, we, we didn't make a contact, and maybe we can before the summer is over, and I uh, haven't seen the previous footage yet. I hope you do enjoy it, but what we're going to do, we're going to run uh, about five minutes or so of uh, some pictures I took last August when we had the first Champlain Village Fest when we talked with Celine. Paquette uh, at the fire station where they had the uh, the two mock-ups, one of the canal boat and the tugboat that was built by uh, one of the Mr. Paquette, one of uh, Larry's uh, uncles. And they were models and uh, talked a little bit about them and she show you how the top comes off. So you'll see that now and then you'll be coming right back and we'll close out this portion and maybe talk to that man who used to work on it. Thank you very much for watching Hometown Cable uh, regularly on a regular basis and uh, it's always nice before we leave the boat completely I wanted to show you a, a drawing here and you can see first the front end is to your left the pilot house is where they steer the boat from and the searchlight is to look forward you can see the horn on top these are probably pointed out to you on the tour the the bow fenders and you see the hanging pieces off the sides of the boat that's so that when you go along a dock or another another boat you aren't uh, scratching everybody up the bow is in the front the stern is in the back a midships is right in the middle, and uh, there's, uh, as you face the bow, port is on your left. There's no such thing as left. That's port, and on the right it's called starboard. Uh, leeward is the side away from the wind, and the side the wind is hitting is called windward, and you want to make sure if you're going to spit over the side of the boat that you're on the leeward side and not on the windward side. You find very quickly what we're talking about. Anyway, the rudder in the back is what steers the boat. And that's about all we'll have. But before we go any further, uh, along with, I'd like to read you a little bit about the Champlain Canal. I'd like to show you a map of New York State with the canal system that we had back in the 1800s. And that portion that ran from the Canadian border up into the Richelieu down to Albany was known as the Champlain Canal. That goes down through Fort Edward. It, it's... Uh, uh, some of the other places there, Comstock, where the Comstock prison is, is roughly close to that. And it was a very eventful thing, and that's the reason for all of the, uh, the boats that you had on this lake that brought merchandise up and down and were towed by the towboat, or the tugboat, as it's known. And on the back of this very nice brochure given out by the urger, it said the Champlain Canal. When the New York State go government began to consider a man-made waterway, which would connect the Hudson River to the Great Lakes. And that's up by way. Of, they first considered a canal which would connect the river to, to Lake Champlain, which would also continue north through Canada and connecting it to the St. Lawrence River. But the War of 1812, which was very active in our area, as you remember, the War of 1812 between the United States and Great Britain, which owned Canada, interrupted those plans. Instead, the Erie Canal route was chosen, and that's the one that went west from Albany. However, to get the support of the northern counties for the money, the government decided to build a canal between the Hudson River and Lake Champlain at the same time as they built the Erie Canal going west. The first Champlain Canal, which was finished before the Erie Canal in 1822, 170 years ago, consisted of two man-made sections, the northern uh, that the southern section joined the Hudson River at Waterford, just outside of Albany, and went north to Saratoga Falls. From there, the boats would re-enter the river. The northern section began at Fort Edward and continued up to White Hall on Lake Champlain. The river section was very difficult for the canal boats. 
1825, a section was added to connect the two canals into one long canal. Another section was added which connected Glens Falls to the canal. This feeder canal, as it was known, brought extra water into the canal from the Hudson River and could also be used for boats. Like the Erie Canal, this Champlain Canal led to a lot of growth in the towns and villages and the canal was very prosperous. Both canals were enlarged several times to accommodate the heavy traffic. Remember in 1822, a, a little bit of sidelight, we didn't have these trains running up into Rouses Point and Shay Z and Plattsburgh. They didn't start until the uh, 40s and 50s, 1840, 1850. So this was the one way of getting the traffic up quickly and cheaply. But like the Erie Canal, as the railroads moved in, the canal couldn't compete with the great improvements that the uh, railroad, without big improvements to themselves, and they figured it wasn't worth the money. Railroads kind of took over in the middle of the 19th century. In 1905, the New York State Barge Canal was designed and a new Champlain Canal was started. The new canal used the Hudson River between Waterford and Fort Edward. A man-made canal continues to Whitehall. Like the modern-day Erie, the northern route is used by large commercial barges and thousands of recreational boats. And that's the story from the brochure on the Champlain Canal. Along the wall, and these two boats right here is a tugboat right here. And uh, there is a barge, and this type of barge, that same type, which brought things up and down Lake Champlain and down into New York City, up the uh, St. Lawrence, uh, the Richelieu, I should say, where uh, these models were made by uh, a Mr. Pocket. Uh, I don't know his first name. I think it's Emil. But anyway, it's Larry's uncle, Bill Pocket's brother, made these. And uh, these types of barges right here, some 60 to 80 feet long, were made in the village of Champlain, just down on uh, across uh, from the main road here, right over the top of that hill on what is known as River Street today. Back in the 1800, it was known as Pleasant Street, and a lot of these very distinctive barges, canal boats they were known as, uh, were made right here in Champlain. And these uh, tops on these boats, these uh, right here, uh, would would remove. You can see these things would come off and they would fill the hold up with uh, merchandise and then they would, uh, there's one right there, uh, Celine is taking it off and then you would load your merchandise into here and they had no motor but they were towed by a barge such as this and they would tow as many as 15 I believe and this was the living quarters on the back of the uh, the boat for the and the man who was in charge of the uh, of the canal boat brought his whole family during the summer they ran up and down when there was no ice and the, all the motor to bring this all the power was done by the the barge and they would when they're on the lake they would have as many as three and four wide and maybe four or five long and they were all hooked together and there was a regular chain of them. And we are indebted to Mr. and Mrs. Paquette for letting us see these here. And a uh, great memento and a great uh, history of what used to be in Champlain, New York. And we have tried to get a lot of information about these old boats and some pictures, etc. And we're thinking of doing a story on Channel 21, uh, what's going on here with Bob Venn on canal boats. But uh, we're not moving along too fast on that endeavor. So we'll go look at some of the other pictures. And here are some pictures in an article on retired skipper Phil Time by making a model. I guess that's the man, Captain George Paquette. So it was George that built this and other models. And this paper is dated 1965. This canal boat was built by Bill Paquette and is a scale model of the type boat that was built in the Champlain boat yard at the foot of River Street around the turn of the century. It was used to make, to haul lumber, coal, hay, and miscellaneous cargo, and they were known from New York Harbor to Quebec City, as well as on the barge canal from Albany to Buffalo. 
A Champlain built canal boat was a proud possession, being exceptionally easy to handle when in tow on Lake Champlain. The last known canal boat to come up the Great Chazy River into Champlain Village was that of Mr. Joseph Allard, and it was anchored just south of Bill Earls where it rotted away. That was about 1938, and isn't that sad? Champlain Canal Boat, El Pocket, that's Larry, expert. Thank you for being with us and uh, watching the tour of the Urger here at uh, Rouse's Point. Today we're back in Champlain, we've got a guest, and our guest is Russell LaFountain. You people in Champlain know Russell, he lives at the corner of Pine and Church Street. And he's a tugboat man himself, and that's why we're here to talk with Russell. Uh, what does it say on it? Barge Canal, look at that. Surf Club, Little Falls, New York. See, he's, uh, all his life he worked on tugboats, right, Russ? Yep. This is Lot 17 in Little Falls, New York, on the Erie Canal. You've been through there, obviously. Uh, lots of times. <laughs> lots of times. Huh? Russell, were you born here in Champlain? Yes. Your mom and dad were who? Uh, my father's name was uh, Emmett LaFontaine, and my mother's name was Elsie Ellor. A-L-L-O-R-E. And those are the people that were in the boats a lot, too, weren't they, that, that they had, family? They had their own boats. Right. Okay. Now, uh, La Fountain. Spell La Fountain for us. There's different ways to do it. How do you spell yours? Well, I'll spell mine. Uh, L-A, capital F, O-N, T-A-I-N-E. Okay. So some people say La Fontaine instead of La Fountain. You're right. You, you say La Fountain? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Russell, uh, how long did you work? When did you start working on tugboats? Uh, what year? Yeah, well, how old were you? Or 30, 39. 1939. And you worked until what year? Uh, 85. That's 46 years, is that right? 46 years, yeah, terrific. And, go ahead, yeah? Uh, I put four years in the service. Okay, well, hey, don't worry about me. If you make a mistake, no. we just say it. That, that camera okay. keeps going. Yeah. All right, going. Oh, that's all right. Okay, now, now, you were four years in the service in between, but other than that, 42 years just, on the boat. Just about. Okay, well, the Russell, they don't have boats in Champlain anymore, so where did you work? Where did you go to work? When you left here, you had to go someplace. Oh, yeah, I had to go wherever the boat was. If it was in Albany, I'd go to Albany. If it was up in uh, Chicago, we'd go to Chicago or wherever it was. If it was up in uh, Delaware, Connecticut, that's where we'd go. If it was our time to get off the boat, we'd get off. How did you happen to start working on tugboats? Well, my father was a tugboatman. All right. And he had three boats of his own. Okay. All right. We'll get back into t some of your experiences after, but uh, in Russell's collection of probably 200, 300 different pictures of tugboats, he happens to have one that Calvin found. And there it is right there, and it's part of our story. That is the Urger, although he said he's never served on the Urger and probably never even seen it, except for here. Uh, he bought this card where? Uh, Waterford, New York. All right. And these are postcards that uh, Russell bought as purchase, and they had uh, they're like a, pretty much like the baseball cards nearly, huh? they had all these tugboat cards. And um, Waterford, New York was the big place for tugboats and well, barges? Well, it, it was a big place for them to start, to go up the canal, they were waiting for it. And this, this is cause here, I'll tell you what, what it says right on it. Okay, canal boats at Waterford, New York, waiting for the canal to open. Now these were canal boats, and if you saw, or I guess you have already seen the part with Mr. Paquette, that the boats that were made here in Champlain, New York, uh, were boats like this, that you filled with cargo, and then you would tow with a tug, right, a yeah. series of barges, barges or canal boats, canal now, to refer to it. Now, and you would tow how many in, in, a, in a tow? Uh, it all depends where you're at. If you're in the canal, you take about six. And on the lake? Well, Lake and Hudson River, you can go. I've seen one uh, Cornell down the Hudson River. You had 50 of them. 50? Towing 50? Yeah, on the Hudson River, though. Yes. Now, of course, they're all lashed together, right? They would be lashed together. And people are on each one of the, the uh, canal boats yes, you as you're have, pulling them, right? They used to have their family on, too. Okay. And they, why would they... What did the guy do on the canal boat while the, you were towing them? He couldn't do anything. Well, they had painting to do, and they, had, they, kept, oh, them, they right. kept them up. And they had their cabins. Yep. They had to do some washing, yep. go out and get groceries. 
They ha and they had no motor, right? No motor on them. No. So you had to be tugged, towed anywhere you wanted to go. That's right. All right. And the canal that you worked on, mostly was east-west, or you came up from New uh, York. Yes. So what did you do? You say you got on at New York. What happened to you then? You'd well, we might have to do some work in New York Harbor. Okay. Maybe we're waiting for a barge to load. All right. After the barge was loaded, wherever the barge had to go, if it had to go to Syracuse, Rochester, we'd head up the river. And you'd be towing four, five, six of these barges? I'm talking about oil barges. Oil barges? Yes. Okay, so you'd pull only one? You put, well, yeah, one. Okay. Now, how big is an oil barge, Russell? Well, some of them are... 220, 20, oh, 20, they're big. They're big. They don't have motors at all in those. Uh, Mobile had one by the name of Mobile Champlain that had its own motor. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's not in use anymore. Now, if you took this oil barge from New York up to Syracuse and you dumped it, what would you do from that point? What would you have to go back to New York get a load? You go back empty? And get a load. Yes. Back empty just yes. by yourself, huh? How long would a trip yeah. take? Excuse me. Uh, if we go back empty, uh, as we were in the canal, we'd have to put water for ballast in order to clear the bridges to get under. And if you didn't do that, you'd never get through. If you did, you wouldn't have no house left. All right. Now, you see, something we wouldn't think of, right? Because when you're full, you're pulling something, it's down low. That's right. And later, it's up in the air, and it would not be, right? Uh, yeah. It wouldn't go under the bridge. So you would tell, you'd bring the barge back empty. Is that what you're saying? It would be empty, but with water in. Oh, yeah, but I mean, it, it, once it was empty, you would wait till it was empty. That's right. And then you'd bring it back down to New York, but then you'd put water in it. So that it would, so that it would be yeah. down below the bridge. Yeah, to get back to New York. Right. Okay. okay. Now, Russell, uh, I know we've talked off camera a little bit a couple of days ago. We wanted to have you do this. Um, you left, let's say you would leave home on a Monday morning to go to wherever your tug was, all right? Uh, how would you get there? How would you get wherever it is? Well, I'd either have to take the train or take a bus. I've taken the airplanes, all the things uh, in the distance. Sometimes I'd have to leave the night before to get to work for the night after. Okay, let's say it's in Waterford. How would you get to Waterford? Well, we'd take the train to Waterford. The train used to stop at Waterford years ago. And leave you off? You leave, you would get off and we could walk to the lock. Okay, now when you said goodbye to your wife that, that day you left, how long before you'd see her again? Well, give or this, take. Well, I've worked uh, like working on the Great Lakes. I used, we used to work 30 days on, 15 days off. It was too far to travel. 30 days in a row you'd work. Yes, and if you're working like in the canal on Lake Champlain, you used to work a week on, a week off, or two weeks on and two weeks off. All right, so you'd be on this a boat like this, so your tugboat, for all that time. That's you slept right. there, you ate there, and you worked. That's right. So you were working 24 hours a day, except for when you, were, you wanted to read or sleep. That's right. That's six hour shifts. Okay. Six on and six, six off. Six on and six off. 12 hours a day. That's right. For six days. That's a lot of work. Okay, then you'd come home for how long? Well, if you work two weeks on, two weeks off, you have two weeks off. Okay. I worked as high as 67 days once up on the Great Lakes. Straight. Straight. Did you do it all that money you made? Well, I spent it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gotta have a good time once in a while, Bob. <laughs> How many people would be on a boat like this? Uh, well, that's a state boat. That's a different story. Well, let's say your, the boat you were on. Let's take, I don't know if we have one here. Let's say one of the boats well, you were on. Here's one here, for instance. Well, we go to the pilot house, have the captain and the mate. The pilot house is up above, the one that that's you see. That's where you steer. That's up here. That's that, yeah, that's right. Okay. Then you've got two engineers. What do they do? Well, they take care of the engine. They, uh, All right. They break down, they, they fix it, and they clean it up, and they keep it going. Then you got uh, two deck hands, so they work on deck. If they know where to go, like I used to know where to go, I used to steer for them once in a while. But they're taking a chance, and if they do it mm -hmm. somebody else, I'm not trying to say them better, but I knew where to go. Mm -hmm. I've been at it quite a while. I've been with captains that didn't know where to go because they were younger than I was, and I was already there, and I gave them a hand. And then we had one cook. Eat pretty good on this ship? Oh yeah, very good, depending on the cook. But they had good food. Yeah, well, good food. Uh, maybe he didn't cook it well, but it was good food. You got so much for each man. Uh-huh.
Could you go get a lunch if you felt like it? Yeah. Anytime, yeah? It was there. Just like home, huh? Just like home. <laughs> you know? I almost never like it. You know? You're telling you, you knew where to go. And I don't know where to go. Calvin tells me, tells me where to go. Well, more than once, he told me where to go. <laughs> Thanks, <Same. laughs> All right. All right, Russell, uh, along when you're going east-west, and that was called the Erie Canal that went east-west. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, the one way you can do that is to go through different levels or the lake That's goes right. east west right now there is a uh which one should i use first here okay let's take this one all right you see remember that one now this is a boat going through a canal and this obviously is going in from the low end and then they they go in and they close the big doors all right yeah, they, they close, close the, the big gate. doors all right and then they start filling it up with water that's right and then when it gets high enough they open the gates on the other end and they go out. They go out, that's right. All right. Uh, we got, there's a series of, I think you said, 12 or 13 locks going across uh, from the south, going to the east or west. Uh, no, if you're going up towards Buffalo, you got 35. 35 different locks. You know, they may be going 20, 30 feet at a time. Sometimes you may have three or four in a row because it's too much to go all at one, one place, right? Oh, uh, that's it. Waterford, New York. They've got okay. uh, two, three, four, five, and six. Five of them. All together. That's what they call the flights. Okay. One after the other. This is number two, which would be, the, obviously, if you're going uh, in that direction, it's the first one. And then you'd be going, from there you'd go up higher and higher to get to the different levels. That's right. And then, uh, now, in a di when you go into a lot, I think you told me, well, let's look at one, a good picture here of the... Uh, well, here's a picture. We'll go back to the urger again. You see this look like straw or in the front? Now, Russell tells me that that is, and why is that on the front of a tug? That's, it. That's what they call a fender. So when you're, if you're pushing an oil barge. Right here. This is the one that's being Yeah, pushed. that's it. There's okay. one right there. You're pushing one of these oil barges, you're not hitting steel to steel. Right. You don't always pull. It, you know, you push sometimes, and, and you push these. That, that's pushing. You don't push them all the way up. You Just when you're going into a lock or out of, is that right? All the way through. All the way through. You're, yeah. Are you are you connected some way other than you have you have cables up to yeah, each yeah, other? Yeah, a couple of cables and a couple of safety lines. That, that's okay. On, that, that's on the bow. I don't know if you can see any on that one. You can't. No, you have to have one. another. You can't see there. Okay. Uh, We'll take a short break and be right back. You're watching uh, Hometown Cable. Uh, what's going on here? Bob Bennett and this portion of it with Russell LaFountain, one of our local residents. Uh, if you remember, I talked some time ago, we'd like to do a story on the building of the canal boats in Champlain, but I've had a lot of trouble uh, trying to find information, anybody who could talk to us about it. But uh, there is one person in town who had a few pictures, and I was up to see her this morning, Miss Helen McCray and a uh, retired school teacher, a uh, graduate of one of our, our local Champlain here many, many years ago, and she uh, was very kind to loan me this picture you're seeing. This picture is taken from behind what is now our telephone office some, some way, looking over onto River Street, and this is the Champlain Boat Building, a company that used to be here in Champlain, New York, and there you can see but the men are standing on one of the barges or canal boats. It can be called either one. Is that right, Russell? Yes, that's right. And they're sitting on what would be the living quarters where the family would live. Did you, did you ever live on one of those? Yes. Your dad worked on one of those? Or did My dad had three boats of his own. Like this? Yeah. Yes. These? Okay. Then that's what they carried on. Not a rudder in the back there, as you that's, can see? That's the rudder. That's the rudder. Kind of steer it way off in the back on the right. And they made these right at the end of River Street, just about... Uh, a little bit more toward the village of where our sewer plant is, they, that whole little on the water. And it went on for years. I think the last one was built in about 1909 or 10 or something like that. And uh, they made some very, very fine canal boats that were well known in, up on the, uh, the Champlain part of the canal. And this picture is a great picture taken. And probably some names, if we knew who those people were, were some of your relatives out there. As a matter of fact, uh, Miss McCray gave me, loaned me, I don't want to scare her, she loaned me this picture of some of the people who worked at the uh, boat building. And uh, this picture, I'll try to explain a little bit. 
Uh, on the second row, uh, as you look at it on your left, the first man was Henry LaFountain. So, you think that might have been your uncle? Could have been. I could've, don't know that been. name. All right. And then the fifth one from the right side of the picture is a man with black hair and he's got like a vest on. He was Ed Pussa, and he was the boss of the yard. The third row, that would be the last row back, uh, the third man from the uh, left, you see he's got his cap with a brim back, uh, name was Cody, didn't have a first name. The next man was uh, LaValle, uh, they think he's a relative of uh, Moon LaValle here from Champlain. And then the second from the right, way over on the right with the floppy brim on his hat, was Fred McRae, Helen's uh, dad, who worked on the boat for many, many years. And this is another great picture that she has that I have never seen, and a great thing here in Champlain. Uh, also, he gave me to, to show you people today is this building you see is on the, I guess you'd call it the south side of the old bank next to the bridge, next to the building we're in. We're in the KC building right now, and they're coming, uh, this would be going to, to your right, would be down where the bridge is, and that little boat or whatever you have there is something that was owned by Bill Earl. Uh, Bill Earl was very well known. The Russell, you tell us a little bit about Bill Earl. Well, all I know is he used to fix bicycles, and he was pretty good at it. And he didn't charge too much. He did it for the kids. He was a man that liked to have children around. And as far as I know, that's what he did. Right. He lived on River Street, and this uh, just as you would turn down River Street, this was a, the building on the right. It would be probably down about two or three hundred feet down on the right, on, right on the river. And if you look across here, this building uh, that we can see over here is the Lewis Hardware building. So this was out here, and look at all the kids with the bicycle. He was nearly a Pied Piper. They, they would gather with him, and he'd tell them stories. He would cook, make soup and beans, and they went over there, and the people always knew where their children went. I know I've talked to Bing Glowed, I've talked to the Greg Wares, Larry Paquette, great fans of Bill Earl. I want to mention what now. Okay, the hardware now would be the auto parts of Champlain, all right, I'm sorry, you new people here that we, uh, it would be uh, right next to the old, right across the little park we have in the village, a couple of doors up from Manny's. And here's another picture of the shop, uh, at the same location, a little lighter picture. See all the kids there, that wasn't unusual. And over on the right, Bill Earl himself, who was, uh, who was Helen, Helen McRae, who owns these pictures, was her uncle, her mother's brother. A fixture, a name here. Used to wear knickers, I understand, and they always talked about Bill Earl's knick knickers. And in addition to these pictures that go along with our story, she happened to have a couple other pictures, and uh, pictures of some floods in, in Champlain, and we picked them up to bring. And this is the Methodist Church, going up Church Street, uh, from bottom to top, and there's a little street that went off to the right, and the river is over here, and that's where it was flooded. And the same time is a picture across the Iron Bridge uh, next to the, the bank building. And uh, this is north, as you cross over toward the village, and uh, there's the old cars, about 30s, and there's the Iron Bridge uh, that they used to have, and they're looking down at the floods, which are way up and probably out onto the streets. Just a little bit of sidelight, uh, courtesy of uh, Miss Helen McRae. Okay, now, as we get back into the pictures, uh, what do I have here, uh, Russell? These are fenders? Yeah, them are rope fenders. They're made up by rope? Yes. All right, and on the back it says 1982, fender made by Larry Paquette and Russell LaFountain. The tug was Aaron Keogh. Right. And that's not our Larry Paquette, is that right? No, that's the one that lives in Silver Lake, if he's still living there. Okay. And then I worked for years, maybe 10 or 12 years together. Okay, and the one, and the one over here is another uh, fender on the bow of the tug Aaron Keel, and they use that to, uh, to urge along or to push along a barge. But in addition to pushing, first they also pull. That's and right. this, I, I was told, was a... Uh, an ocean? That's an ocean, ocean, ocean tug. tug. 
Now they would they didn't cross the ocean with that, did they? Oh, they go across the ocean. All the way across well, the ocean. Someone, someone. They could. Huh? Okay. And you see they would tow it and uh the tug went across the ocean. The tug went across the ocean? Oh, I see so someone used to go way up to Farmer. Oh yeah? Well, all right. Yeah, so then here is uh, another one being towed, a picture here you can see. Again, some more pictures of a tug doing its work. And uh, here is a picture, Russell told me, taken from the back end of a tugboat. And these two are lines attached to the bars that they're pulling. And Russell, it seems like it's a long way off. Now, how long would they tie well, up our part? And some of them. Well, that one there, we were towing, I believe, up the Hudson River. I could be maybe a hundred feet, but if you go out in the ocean, they run a thousand feet, twelve hundred, with a cable attached to the rope. And this is rope here, right? You see? That is rope. That's what so they that call. Have... That's what they call hawser. Okay. Now the hawser. To give you an idea, there was another picture here. I don't see it quickly, but here is a is some hawser. You can see the bottom of this picture, nearly the size of your arm. It's at least the size of your arm. It's big. Uh, they're about six or eight inches. <laughs> All right. And, of course, they would, uh, you could tighten. It was made out of uh, hemp or uh, regular, regular big rope type yeah. thing. And you can see that it's not all easy because you see that white stuff right there? That's not cotton or batten. That's snow, right? And, that's right. Uh, you're, it's not always warm out there when you're well, working. That's taken in Connecticut. Okay, and this is you here in the picture? Yes. Now, that's taken a few years ago. You can see that back in the 40s or 50s. I would say so. <laughs> All right. Now, give my age away. Oh no, not yet. I don't care. Okay. Now, I'm proud of it. here is the hawser. Here, here is uh, uh, this is you here with a life preserver. A life preserver and the hawser on the bottom. You can see the, the size of that. And it's uh, ever break much? Some of them are 10, 12 inches. Is that right? Well, if you're towing a heavy yeah. large ship or something, yeah. you don't have a bigger one than that. This is mostly for canal work, harbor work. Did they uh, break at all, Russell? Well, Very sometimes often. they'll snap. Did you have to, uh, did, do you know how to splice them? Oh, yeah. That was part of the deck hand job, eh? Yeah. Into, into weaving and back and forth. Now, you've got to remember that not all the time, as we mentioned, is it in the summer. In the winter, and this is the canal. That's the Hudson River. The Hudson River. And so they have an ice breaker that would break the ice so that the, the tugs could pull there or push. And they said they wanted to keep their working during the summer. Winter, you need things just as much as you do in the summer. And here you can see some things that where the ice has been broken. They've broken the channel, as you know, from uh, Cumberland Head. Right? Go ahead, Russell. Well, this is taken on Hudson River. See, after the ice is broken by the icebreaker, this is when the tug keeps following, stays in the channel. And that helps them to keep going. Okay. You can see the tug is pulling the big uh, bars behind it. Here's a picture of a, a tug again. You see all the fenders on the side that are hanging. And the bow that they use to push, they have that big fender. Uh, another picture of very much the same. And again, you, know, you see the size of some of the chunks of this ice that they've broken. And here is... Uh, the, the pilot house, that's where the captain or the man in charge That's right. did, did the steering. They could see. This was higher, so he could see. Uh, when you're pushing something, how do you see over and above what you're pushing? Well, in some, uh, some uh, barges are too high, you can't. But some of them, that they're lower, they have a high pilot house. It goes up and down. Uh, they raise it up. They, they do. Now, yeah. th does the barge able to steer itself ahead of you a little bit? As you push it, can it steer itself? Well, when you turn the wheel, the cable makes the, the barge turn to the left or to the right. Yeah, but if you're pushing. That's, that's what they do. Oh, and I the, see. The cables on the back. Ah, that will move. Okay. The barge, and when you turn the wheel to the right, which is the starboard side, that's the way it goes. You hear that, that, that <coughs> Navy talk there, that, that water talk? Starboard, that's the right-hand side. We told you about that the other day. One more thing I wanted to show you here. Uh, you see this? round thing over on this boat here and there's one over right behind here they would tie one to the other but the big one right here just to the right of that person was you told me was a the captain 
Right here? That black one, yes. And what's that used for? You put the rope on there to pull that, these ropes in here when they're, you can't pull them by hand. It and it would, it would uh, rotate. It goes around. It goes around. And it, and it keeps coming. It would turn around this here, and you'd hold it on this end, and one guy holds it this way, and then the other guy curls it around. And see, one guy gets tired of one, doing one thing, if it's too long, then we change. Can I assume that rope is a little wet at times? Well, sometimes it is. It's pretty icy in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I imagine. You, you have to break it in the winter time, break the ice. You know, sometimes you have to take it and run it all the way up in the bottom deck, come back and get another piece and try to break it and bring it up. That's when it's solid. Okay. Froze. And this man you're sitting here, see, used to smoke a pipe. 20-year-old Russell LaFound right here. Just about it. <laughs> Long life on the on the tugboats to go, and he, he looked happy. They just got finished eating. How'd you know? I could tell. You got to smile. <laughs> All right. All right. And here is, uh, let's see what else we got. This is a picture of a, would this be a oil boat or just a barge? That's a barge. Right, this is a barge. Uh, Dana Bray under the guard gate between lock six and seven on the Champlain Canal. That would be the, the Champlain Canal is that which went from the Albany area north up here to Rouse's Point. And this is looking uh, from back to front of, the, of this big barge. Would there be any people on the barge like that? Right in the back, yeah. He's whispering to me that the tugboat was back there. The tugboat was the James J. Keel. Uh, that's it. <laughs> well, you can't, it's hard to see it. Okay. It's way to back here. You can see the tugboat is pushing this. So this is the front. I was wrong. They're pushing it from behind, coming through into the lot. All right. And here's another uh, pulling two, right? No, no, only one. Only one? One. This is in Plattsburgh. Okay. Tell us about this one. Yeah, that's in Plattsburgh. The barge, yeah. That oil? Yeah, we came up with a load of oil. Uh-huh. And it, that's tied up at the state dock. So much oil. Up by the way, the mill is there. Okay, and there's a big high uh, pilot house on that one, you can see. And you were working on this one, you were on the PO? That's the one. How many different ones did you serve on, Tink? I mean, oh. I don't want to give me exact, but are we talking five or 25? Uh, 25 would be more like it. Why would you go from one to the other? Well, sometimes one would be breaking down. Did they have one, a spare one, so you go on that one. So did the company own a whole bunch of them, they put you on one or the other? Uh... Well, that boat there, I worked for the last company, it was Keogh Company, and I worked 19 years on that one boat out of 20. You did? Oh, on the Keogh? With just about the same crew. Now, you said there were seven, and then when you seven went off, seven more would come on? Yes. A different crew? Were there more than two crews? No, just one. When, when one crew wasn't on, the other one was? There was four crews, there's two on and two off. Because I said two, four, six. I don't follow you. In other words, there's two men in the firehouse, right? Yes. And there's two homes, so you've got to double them up. Okay, so everything is doubled. All right. right, yes. Well, except the cook. Except the cook. He yes. stays there all the time. No. Oh. There's only one at a time. Okay, so all right. Cook coming or going. Oh, you're saying there's two every time that there's two, so that when one is sleeping, the other one can be working, because you don't ever stop, right, on a tugboat? You keep going all the time? Well, except in the canal, if it's foggy or something. Yeah. If you're running down the Hudson River, up the canal, up the lake, rather, you use the radar. All right, here's a picture from the booklet that was given out with the urger showing the uh, part of the Champlain Canal. It's a picture of the Champlain Canal. And uh, we'll maybe take another break here and look at some more pictures. Here's, here's another general shot. On uh, the back here it says between lock four and five, Champlain Canal. That's right. Uh, pump cargo out of high, uh, Chapman had accident. Tug, pre, tug crew had barge 32. I don't know what all that means, but that's what they saw. You didn't see much scenery as you went up and down on the canal, did you? Well, the same one all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look at see that. See what happened to this one. One barge went aground. Okay. And in order for the barge to leave, get off the bottom, they had to pump cargo out of that one into the next one, so it can raise the barge up. So they sent another one from New York all the way up, to another see. one to I do see. the job. So once they got level, then they took off again. They got off the bottom. Russell, how would you run a ground like that? 
Is that, is that a mistake of the, the captain, or is that just the wind blowing? Or well, what are some you generally that? have troubles when you've got a light barge that the wind is blowing. They're like a kite in there. Yeah. There's no cargo, but sometimes you never know. You're daydreaming, and you're on the ground, and you think you ain't got, uh, not in the right place, and you yeah. see, then you go the wrong way, and you're on the ground. It's, yep. So you, uh, you moved as much more oil than anything else, would you say? Uh, in the last... 20 years, I'd say, yes. Yeah. Well, Maybe uh, more than 20 years, because the canal was in close quite a while. It's just about dead now. Yeah. Changing times, and you're, we're going to change the battery or film here right now. So thanks for tuning in to Hometown Cable. Bob Ben with Russell LaFont and Calvin on the camera, and you're watching Surrey Tugboats and Barges in the Champlain Canal and throughout New York State. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be right back. You're looking from on the deck, the back part of the barge, an oil barge, being pushed to go through that opening under the bridge. It takes a lot of steering to go through. Remember, that's being steered by the right. guy behind, right, with the tug. That's right. And so your first question should be, do they always make it? They that don't always make it? It all depends on the high, <laughs> high water. All right. Once in a while... You can see here that that was not from freezing. That was where somebody didn't quite make it. And they ran into this big steel uh, stone abutment, met abutment, right? That's, That's right. You should see those once in a while when you were... <laughs> yes, I've seen a few of them. All right. And then he had some more. These books over here are full of pictures of tugboats. Russell has a very extensive collection, very, very proud of. He told me this. I could keep this home overnight, but it could not leave the house. And I said, you bring it home, I don't want to take the responsibility. This is full of pictures, mostly postcards, that he's picked up, right? There's 192 in this book. 192, and he's something that he knows, probably has seen everyone, may have been on nearly everyone over the period, and, but he probably was never on one of these, at least to serve. No, I never was. So what, what are these, Russell? Is this, this for a parade and they're making water here? What is this? No, that's, well, they take them in parades too, but that was taken when they, they have uh, to show that it's a fire boat. If they have a fire on the piers, that mother wants to put it out. If they have fires on ships or canal boats at, at that time or whatever, that's what they use. So they go in from the side, you know, from the water side. You can't always get in from the other side. That's where the fire is. So this area will come in from the water because the water side don't have any fire. They can get pretty close, you know, and, and put the fires out. And uh, we thought those were good. Go ahead. They always have, uh, also have some on the tugboats, one of them, that they use if they need help. You mean you, ha you have uh, hoses, you yes, mean? Yes, they okay. have to put the fire out. It would be very dangerous out there if you did with, uh, with all that oil, your towing and things. Now, Russell, this is a real old picture. You can see how it's... The sides all breaking apart. It's so dry. And on the top it says, boat that used to run at Shazy Landing, and that was a tug, January 4th, 75. That doesn't mean 1875. It certainly wasn't running in 1975. What's the 75 for? That's the year I bought it. All right. Where'd you buy this, Russell? you remember? Yes. I mean, I don't know if the location was up in this area. Yes. It was? Yes. Garage sale? For no. No? Okay. I'll it's tell you what, you want to know? Yeah, sure. Go at an auction. At an auction? Over in Cato. And you knew what it was at the time? In Albert. Did you know what the picture was? Well, when you... he showed it to me, I knew what it was. All right. Great picture. You know, that was down near the Sachs Landing, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Down... Somewhere around there. I don't know where it runs to. According to what it was on there, it's still on there. Crazy landing. I don't know if it went to Burlington or Fort Henry or Plattsburgh or what. I it was have no the, idea. The Levy initials Levy, L-E-V-Y. A yes. nice old picture, part of his collection. Tugboats. If you got something on tugboats, I guess at home and you don't know what to do with it. I guess you wouldn't. You wouldn't be adverse of just having someone give you something with a tugboat. I'd be willing to buy them. Well, all right. I I want to look myself because I'm going to watch from now on. If it's a tugboat. Even if it's a second, I'm sure Russell would love to have it. And people like their collections. Now, as far as money-wise, who cares what this is worth? To you, it means everything, right? It's your life. Uh, That's right. Forty years there of, of work. Yep. And let's see what all this started. Here is a... I guess I may have these upside down here. No? There's a barge being towed. You 
can see uh, by a tug, the tug is where you are, if you look at this picture, and there's the lines that are pulling it. And here's another one with the long line. You can see they're back three, four hundred feet. And just to the your right, you see a tugboat. And why is that other tugboat there, Russell? Well, he's got some barges behind him, and he's, he's passing the one in Ryman. He's either only got two, three boats, or the tug's got more power. See, they're even racing on the, on the, on the canal it's here. It's on the canal. They've got to get their work done, all right? Now, this picture here is a very, very important picture in not only the Champlain, but in the life of uh, Russell right here. And who is this, Russell? And that's my father. And his name again was? Emmett LaFontaine. Emmett LaFontaine. And he's on his boat. He had how many? He had three of them on his own. Now, I say boat. Let's say these are the barges. These were the well, things that used to pick up and then bring the merchandise up and down the river. Towed by a tugboat. That's right. So he, did he have to hire him that work, Russell? Yeah, yeah, you have to hire him. They have to pay him so much. So he would uh, contract with someone to bring their merchandise to someplace else. That's right. And then he'd pay his expenses, one of which was the tugboat. That's it. Uh, the landing at a dock and everything else, right? That went with it. Right. Now, if he was gone for several weeks, did the family go with it? Oh, yes. So your mom and you and Floyd yes. went on the... Uh, now, you see where it says Floyd right there? Well, this man's name wasn't Floyd. Just, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you, but we're going to get back to that. Here is his dad. And what's he doing here, Russell? Well, he's watching how they're loading the cargo on. You have to put it at a certain place, which sometimes if you don't have it level, your boat is side, right. sideways. And, uh, here you can see all the hatches have been opened at the top. And where you put this, it's called the hatch, and all the tops are open. You can see it about maybe 18, 20 feet wide, and they've loaded all this merchandise. They put the hatch back on top, and they, they get pulled down the river. river That's right. right. There you go. That's all right. it. All right. Now, we told you we... I'm not going to keep you in suspense any longer. What about Floyd? See the name of that boat right there? This barge? What's it called? This is the Floyd? Well, that's the Floyd and Russell. Floyd and Russell. Because he had two sons named Floyd and Russell. This is Russell. Floyd, you see around the community very much. Uh, dedicates his time to the firemen very much. He's been a uh, fixture in our community. And it was called the Floyd and Russell, one of the three boats. And here it is tied up. Uh, I say boat, I mean barge or canal boat. It's called a canal boat. And here is either Floyd or Rus uh, Russell. We don't know which, right, at this point? I'm not sure. Not sure which one this is, but here they are on the, the back end of the uh, canal boat. And this portion you can see, I'm looking at here just a moment, this portion here, Russell. Tell us what that is, that white with the windows. That's the living quarters? Yeah, that's the okay. cabin. Okay, tell us about the cabin. What is it? Part is above the deck and part is below. Yeah, part is on below and uh, there's some on the top. And uh, the one I was on when I was captain, the other one that you showed, I think you showed it. No, right? yeah, we're coming yeah. to that. Yeah. Well, anyway. That one, well, we'll wait for that one there. Okay. We'll wait for that one. So you lived in there. Your mother and you and, and Floyd would live in there while your dad was working. And you slept in there and so forth, right? That's right. Okay. We used to go to, we, we went to St. Mary's here. We used to get off uh, when the school was over and we'd go up and down the canal. And then when it was time to go to school, we'd leave. You see this, the La Fountain, the Allard, Allor. Uh, other names in this town. I think the Averills is in the Yeah, the old uh, Cuponas and uh, yeah. Hunts and all kinds of Pussons. They're all canalers. Okay, now, uh, the Pusson, uh, Mrs. Coax, uh, from um, the 276, her brother, his name is, uh, he goes under the, the English translation of Fish, and he worked on the tugs and the barges for a long, long time. I talked with him. He didn't have any uh, didn't have a great number of pictures. Now this is an unusual uh, thing, and this you see the cabin, and you see a, a superstructure over it. What's that for, Russell? Uh, that's the winter thing. That's what you put over your cabin, so you won't get the the, the main cabin full of soap and water if you're washing clothes. If the snow is coming down that way there, so because when you in order to get down to that one, there's a little hatchway there, and you got to pull it. And if you didn't have that on there, you'd have this part of the cabin all full of snow. Well, it'd be raining and everything, and full of ice. This way here, you don't have it. It's only on the top of that one and on the sides. That's the way they made their living. And, of course, 
<coughs> when you work with your dad for a while and you sometimes take over a boat. This is the guy we've already seen. He smokes a pipe. So it's this guy sitting on my left right here, Russell, sitting, and you were the captain of this boat? Yes, I was. What was the name of it? Uh, uh, Martha O'Neill. They don't even give you the Floyd Russell? They give you the Martha O'Neill? Well, uh, I, was, uh, I was working for somebody. Oh, this so was for somebody else? already on there. Oh, this was somebody else oh, yes. you were working yeah. for? Yeah. How long were you on a barge? Oh, five, six years. And then you went on to tug? Yeah, I went on to tug. Would you say that's a promotion, or would you say that it's the same, or more enjoyable, what? Well, uh, I, I thought I'd like it better. Okay. You wasn't all by yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm tell you always got a crew. So you were traveling all your life, like a, pretty like a uh, bus, like a about, bus driver, huh? Just about. When you, when you leave home and come back, were you glad to get home? You have a son, right? Yes. And where is he living? He lives up in, uh, up in Herkimer County. Yeah. Bright red hair. And guess who, uh, we used to all, guess what, uh, who was the, uh, the, uh, the, the menace? Remember the papers? Dennis the menace? We used to call his son Dennis, Dennis the menace, right? A lot of people did. Right. Red, red hair and a great smile. And uh, uh, we seen him a couple of years ago here, or a few years ago. Yeah, he lives somewhere uh, about five miles from Little Falls. And what's he doing? He's in the insurance business. Okay. Well, Russell, thank you very much for getting all this together for us and oh. talking to us about... The romance of uh, on the lake and on the water, right? It's a pleasure. Well, thank I you. I had a chance to look at my book again. <laughs> All right. You know, uh, you see Russell on the, uh, once in a while. Just ask him. Ask him some questions that I didn't think to ask him. And he'd be glad to tell you about what he did. It, it, I asked him the other day. I said, what's a typical day? He said there was no typical day. Uh, things. Uh, so what, for instance, you took off and you went to Buffalo. And your time is up. So you have to get a ride from Buffalo back home. Right? That's right. And then you'd stay here your week or six days or 12 days, and then wherever the, the tugboat was at that time, you went to that location. That's it. Did they pay your transportation from Buffalo here, or did, was that out uh, of your salary? Well, they, did. they didn't do it years ago. But uh, years ago, when we first started in 1939, he was on a boat steady from spring of the year till, till winter time. You stayed there? Stayed on a boat all the time. Back in 1939, uh -huh. 38. I thought that's what I would have quit right then. I think that that seems like a... Of course, there weren't a lot of jobs in 39, I guess, huh? No. Yeah. Well, if you like it, well, you like it, of course. It. It's in your blood and your family, you know, of course. It's in the family, course. so that's how come yes. I stayed. I mean, you had to go because there was nothing like that around here. And I think I asked you off camera, there's nobody else in Champlain and or Blacksburg that you knew that worked this kind of a job while you were working that you know of? It no. may have been, but you don't know who they are. So you had a very different kind of job. He should have been on What's My Line on television. They would have oh, found yeah, out what sure. you did. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, anything else you want to tell me, Russell, before we no. close out? No, I don't believe so. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this whole thing. I'm sorry I didn't make that first part of this uh, showing, but I'm certainly glad that Marty was there. And thanks again, Marty, for a great job. And uh, by golly, this, uh, when I retire here, uh, we'll, we'll get you on full time. Marty takes a lot of pictures for Hometown Cable, and Calvin is smiling as I say this because Marty's a great help with Hometown Cable. Well, I just want to show you a couple of pictures of uh, some that you've served on these. Yes. A couple of the large tugs that he served on. These are frames, so they must have a special place in his heart. The others are in books. And uh, you can see that... Uh, all takes place here. They slept here, they ate here, they worked here, and they look forward to getting home from here. That's true. Okay. Uh, we don't know what's going to be on next Sunday, but we hope you'll tune in next Sunday, as well as uh, every Sunday at Hometown Cable at 1.15, uh, 4.30, 8 p.m., midnight, 8 the following morning. And you don't, you don't have to be on a Sunday. That's when you will see me but and Calvin doing this. But uh, any night of the week, same thing. You get to watch all our board meeting that noticed the other night he had the boat for the chaise uh was on the screen uh, by the 11 o'clock news at night i saw him going across the screen and i knew about the election for the uh the budget and chaise and the election and uh, thanks for help tuning in if you're not already a member of the patrons of uh, hometown cable don't you consider it and he's always looking forward to a check he checks his mailbox every